Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.8 and Razbam Simulations M2000C Mirage Module. Welcome to bonus video number 3, Low PRF and Jamming. Uh, today we're going to take a, a more in-depth look than we did during the BVR tutorial at how the PRF modes work, most specifically the low PRF mode, and what it looks like when targets are jamming you both in high and low PRF modes. So with that in mind, I have created two groups of MiG-29s. They're going to pass each other right in front of us with this landmass in view, and I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like when you have the radar in a lower PRF setting. So before we unpause and begin, uh, oh, actually, I will have to get rid of the pilot body so we can actually see what we're looking at. Uh, radar control panel, as before, is down here on the left console. The controls that we're interested in today are the gain uh, setting here. Gain is actually only used when you're in low PRF. The high PRF has no gain control because it's not displaying a raw radar image uh, like you are in low PRF. Uh, we've got the PRF switch right here. It has settings for HFR, which is the, the usual high PRF setting. Most of the time you're going to use this, uh, and that means that all the filters are engaged and uh, contacts are displayed on the radar as a result of processing of the radar signal. Uh, the bottom setting all the way aft is BFR. This is for low PRF. And in this setting, the radar just displays a raw radar image with no filtering. There's, uh, there's no speed gate, there's no side lobe filter, there's uh, no filtering of ground returns. So you will see everything. And it's then up to the pilot visually to uh, decode that radar image. There is also a middle position, uh, which is actually ENT in French, and that's for interleaved. Uh, and in that mode, it will do a high PRF scan and a low PRF scan, one after the other. So that can be quite handy as well. Uh, the other thing we'll probably make use of is the lines, which is the, the bars and the scan. Uh, default is for one, two, or four. So with that in mind, let's uh, unpause and get started. Uh, currently in uh, the high... Um, uh, the, the high PRF, and that's denoted up at the top here by showing HFR, and we're at 40 nautical miles of range here. So let's uh, switch it. Let's go all the way down to the low, and you'll see the difference here. It now displays BFR, and you'll note that we're getting ground returns, which actually can be kind of handy. Uh, it allows us to kind of locate those targets in relation to ground masses. Uh, and you'll note that the contacts that we had before are now gone. Um, it can be um, it can be more difficult sometimes to, to pick up contacts in uh, the low P, um, the low PRF modes. Uh, however, it will sometimes allow you to display contacts that would otherwise not be visible. Let's take a quick look at the F10 and see where they are. Yeah, so we're we're slowly getting closer, and um, as we get a bit closer, we should start to see those returns. Let's see what we see. And as I said, we're going to see raw returns on the display, so it's up to us to decode these and figure out what they are. Well, actually, I realized the little mistake that I made here. I really want two-bar scan, because that's going to make this much, much quicker and easier to deal with. We don't need the full four bars. And yeah, it might be the case that we'll need to wait until we get closer. I'm also going to bump the gain, because uh, that will also help. I'm going to increase it just a bit. Oh, and there we go. That's exactly what I needed to do. So you note that I've increased the gain a bit. I'm just going to pause here. Uh, and now these targets are getting kind of teased out uh, just a little bit. So there is, of course, just random interference at range. Uh, you can ignore this. Uh, these are four distinct contacts, left and right, for those two uh, flights of aircraft. And you'll also notice this ring in front of our aircraft. Uh, this is because these are the returns from the side lobes. Uh, so basically, this is actually showing us our altitude because uh, it's it's ground returns just from the side lobes of the radar. Um, normally, this would be filtered out uh, by the computer, but uh, we are not doing any filtering as of right now. Now, one thing to note is that in this mode, I can't actually lock anything up. Uh, I don't have the ability to do TWS uh, or to lock things or to do anything. If I depress the TDC, absolutely nothing happens. So this is purely for um, situational awareness. However, if I bump that range down a little bit, 
it should be even clearer what we're seeing here. There we go. These targets are starting to appear. Uh, and just for fun, let's do the interleaved mode as well. So you get a, a feel for what that looks like. And of course, in the interleaved mode now, we're seeing the raw radar returns, but we're also seeing the symbols uh, as the, the contacts are actually interpreted by the radar. Going to bump it back to low PRF, and actually I'm going to increase the gain even further. Uh, and because we don't have ground returns or other interference here, that makes these returns really clear now. So I can see uh, absolutely that we have two four ships of aircraft there. So there you go. That's uh, that's what the uh, the low PRF looks like for normal contacts. I'm not going to reset this situation. I'm going to introduce some jamming, uh, and I'll show you what jamming looks like both in a uh, high uh, PRF and low PRF. Okay, here we are. I've reset the simulation, and uh, this time I've introduced some jamming contacts. Uh, so you'll see that we're in high PRF just now, as indicated by HFR at the top right. Uh, but we have a new symbol now, which is this yellow B at the top left. Whenever the radar detects jamming signals, it displays this B, so that you know to look out for... Um, Strange behavior in new symbology. Uh, and the main one is received jamming energy based on azimuth. This is displayed as asterisks around the very edge of the radar scan volume. Uh, and it's uh, received jamming energy anywhere from one to three asterisks. So you can see that on this azimuth here, we're receiving maximum strength jamming here, here, and then a little bit less here. It's not uncommon that you'll see this. Uh, it'll almost be like a triangular shape, uh, simply because the received jamming energy is not usually exactly, you know, kind of all the way down one azimuth exactly. Let's unpause and you'll see this as we go along. Uh, so you'll note that the left-hand group is not jamming, the right-hand group is jamming, and we're just getting these symbols. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and see what that looks like in low PRF. And in low PRF, you can see that we actually get a jamming strobe. Uh, actually, let's reduce the bar scan, increase the gain. Oh, and there you go. That's showing it really, really clearly. Let's go ahead and pause. Oops there, so that the scan's out the way. So left-hand group, four individual contacts, fairly easy enough to tease out with the naked eye. Right-hand group, completely obliterated by jamming energy. Now, the, uh, the, the RDI radar in the Mirage, you tend to burn through most types of jamming at between 20 and 25 nautical miles. So uh, eventually we will actually be able to see those targets. However, in low PRF mode, you'll pretty much always have this cone. Like, it's going to be almost impossible, even once you're within 20 nautical miles, to tease those targets out of this noise. Um, so in actual fact, you are going to want either interleaved or HFR mode in order to ever have a chance of actually picking up this target. And actually, let me go ahead and, and pause it right there. We have actually achieved burn through here. Um, this is actually already working. So you can see it's picked up three symbols here on the azimuth where there's jamming. And this is actually a really common thing. You'll commonly have a fake, uh, a ghost target appear at half the distance from you to the actual target. So this is something to watch out for. If you know that you have jamming on a particular azimuth, don't be surprised if you get a contact like this. You need to learn to ignore that. It, of course, you know, it could be a real tar target, uh, but um, if you know that it's the result of jamming, uh, you can ignore this. The other thing you'll notice is that these contacts will remain pretty consistent. This one will appear and disappear from time to time, uh, and that's another way that you can tell that it is, in fact, a ghost jamming contact. Oh, actually, we've got a bunch more of them appearing here as well, and now they're gone. So, especially as these targets get closer, um, it should be less often that you get the, the ghost one. Actually, there we go, we're getting ones appearing really far away as well. So the, the range is slightly scrambled uh, when they're jamming contacts, but when you see the asterisks, you know to expect that. So uh, that's not so bad. Uh, note as well that the radar's sensitivity generally is going to be worse in these uh, azimuths where you're receiving jamming signals. It might even be worse overall as the system automatically tunes its filters. Um, so that's very important to note. But yep, if you see the yellow B uh, and the asterisks, you know what's going on. Uh, you're experiencing jamming. And let me just show you that again on low PRF. Uh, and you can see, although we know for a fact that we have actually burned through on the right-hand group, in low PRF, we are not seeing them at all. Um, I could probably mess around with the gain a bit and try. 
but yeah, it's going to be basically impossible to find the targets in that noise. Um, so yeah, you need to be in high PRF really if you want to have a chance. So there you go, that is a bonus video number three for the Mirage 2000 Low PRF and Jamming Contacts. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Also, you have the option of joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew for a small monthly fee displayed on the screen now, or those of you who have already uh, joined Deep Hack's Ground Crew, thank you very, very much for doing so. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Um, and also, you, know, you have certain um, kind of bonuses that you get, basically, if you're a member of Deep Hack's Ground Crew. We have been running the occasional session. I'm actually going to be uh, planning another one very soon where we fly together online and I record those uh, and at some point I might even uh, release some some of the the video footage from those sessions and uh, additionally we have a discord where we can hang out so uh, those are two small things I'll probably figure out more things to reward you fantastic people at a later date but thank you all for watching and fly safe